Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and we'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost in the year of our Lord, 2021. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as we praise God in the words of the opening song, Be Unto Your Name. call to repentance before God is from Job chapter 9. How can a man be in the right before God? If one wished to contend with him, one could not answer him once in a thousand times. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and succeeded. He who removes mountains, and they know it not, when he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth out of its place, and its pillars tremble? Who commands the sun, and it does not rise? Who seals up the stars? Who alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea? Who made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the chambers of the south? Who does great things beyond searching out, and marvelous things beyond number? Behold, he passes by me, and I see him not. He moves on, but I do not perceive him. Behold, he snatches away. Who can turn him back? Who will say to him, what are you doing? When our world isn't disregarding God entirely, it questions his motives and demands to know, what are you doing? His word tells us, and all who care to listen, to repent of all our sins and trust in the Savior he has provided. Let us confess our sins in the sure and confident hope that God is eager to hear us for Christ's sake. Dear God, since Adam's fall into sin, all mankind has been born spiritually dead, deserving eternal punishment and unable to save itself. Our sinful condition cannot understand your will and militates against you. We have sinned much and gone astray in thought, word, action, and inaction. We are truly sorry for all our transgressions and desire to amend our sinful lives. Forgive us for Christ's sake. Amen. Jesus saw our 
desperate condition and mercifully came alongside to help, even sending his spirit, the paraclete, to us through word and sacrament. Jesus suffered eternal torture on the tree of the cross so that we might be freed from the tortures our sins truly deserve. On the basis of your confessing your sins and in the stead of and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by praising him in the words of beautiful Savior all my days. Our psalm for today is Psalm 136, verses 1 through 6. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. And to him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Old Testament lesson is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. 
Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21 is our epistle lesson. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel lesson is Mark chapter 6, verses 45 through 56. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray, and when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly amazed. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people and their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon hymn this morning is God Moves in a Mysterious Way. Judge not the Lord 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the theme for our sermon this morning is Just Walk On By, Not Jesus. The well-known gospel story of Jesus walking on the water is recorded by St. Mark in our text for today. And there's also a parallel passage of the same event in the gospel according to St. Matthew. And St. Matthew includes the better known episode of Jesus inviting St. Peter, who somewhat challenges Jesus and says, if that's really you, call me to come out and walk on the water and I'll do it. But St. Mark, with his emphasis on dynamism and action and Jesus immediately moving from one event to the next, omits the invitation of Peter and that's somewhat unusual considering most people think that Mark was a bit of a disciple or an aide to St. Peter. Perhaps Peter had some influence and through modesty chose him to omit that section. But what is included is very helpful for you and for me as we go through the storms and vicissitudes of life uh, that's a phrase and an image that's used so often that um, it almost gets worn out. But the fact that Jesus performed a whiz-bang, super-whopping miracle of feeding 5,000 men, and probably there were women and children along as well, with just a few loaves and fishes. And then he tells his disciples, I'll dismiss the crowds. They've gathered in groups of hundreds or fifties and I'll bless them as they go their homeward way. And I want to pray to my Father in heaven. And Jesus actually spends hours doing that from probably sundown till perhaps three or four in the morning when he starts his walk out to see the disciples. But Jesus sends the disciples in the boat across the Sea of Galilee. And Mark makes a big point of the fact that the disciples did not understand the loaves. Jesus has already healed people in the presence of his disciples. He has miraculously fed thousands upon thousands of people in a way somewhat reminiscent, although not identical, to God providing food to the Old Testament people that he had released from slavery in Egypt and bondage to Pharaoh, providing daily manna for them. The disciples take their eyes off the lesson of the loaves, as Mark makes clear, and they set about to rowing. Now, as professional fishermen of that day and age, they had no inboard or outboard motors. They may have had a sail, probably did, but that wouldn't help against a contrary wind. And they did have oars. And we are told that the wind was against them, they rode for hours, had probably three miles to go across the Lake of Galilee or the Sea of Galilee. And the action in the Gospel lesson for today takes place, and they are described as being in the midst of the sea. So there's equidistant area for them to try to escape if they have to swim to shore and their boat is swamped or destroyed by the winds and the contrary waves. But it also says, and it uses a very specific Greek word, that they are rowing tortuously. And Matthew includes the fact that even the boat itself is being tortured by the wind and the waves. So this is a grave situation even for experienced seamen. And I would like to remind you that when life seems to be 
more than just a little bit challenging when perhaps your body and your health seem to be tortuous, when the props that we can find for all sorts of means of earthly support, as in the case of the boat, seem to be failing us or under great stress and strain, Jesus is still willing to come to his modern-day disciples who like his disciples of old, may have taken their eyes off the fact that he has already miraculously healed people. He's already miraculously raised people from the dead. And he is the one through whom all creation was spoken into existence. He has all power and all authority in heaven and on earth. And we can look to him with 2020 hindsight that those early disciples didn't have, recognizing that he even raised himself from the dead and ascended into heaven, and that he is busily working all things to good for those who love him. The events of this past year with the extreme stress of COVID-19, or SARS-CoV-2, which blossoms into COVID-19, has placed great stress on countries, on cities, on families, and on individuals. And as we in the first world seem to be crawling out from under this great burden and great torture of life as we had not known it before, we look at countries such as India, where perhaps four million people have died. The continent of Africa, which is currently tremendously burdened. And we ask the Lord to help us not only remember them in prayer, but to use what we can to share the love of Christ, to reach out to meet some of the physical needs and challenges that people in third world countries have borne for these many months as they struggle to get on top of this worldwide pandemic. Jesus cared enough about his disciples to come alongside them and offer them help. It almost appeared as if he was going to pass up the boat, Mark indicates, that he would continue walking along. The disciples first thought he might have been a ghost and cried out for help. He reassured them that he was not a ghost, and he says in the Greek, go I me, I am, which is the personal name of God revealed first to Moses in the whiz-bang miracle of the burning bush, to show that God is the creator, and he can break into the lives of his creation whenever he wants, and he can defy the laws of physics whenever it suits him. And so the same God whom Job refers to as the great I am and the great Lord, who plants his feet upon the seas, appears invisible to Job, and he says, who can see him? Well, in the person and work of Jesus Christ, not only God the Father, but now God the Son, can demonstrate his ability over the forces of nature. He's shown that he can feed thousands of people miraculously. He's showing his disciples that he can walk on water. And perhaps if he was doing more or intending to do more than just come alongside them to help, but walk ahead of them to lead them, showing that the God who controlled the flood and saved Noah and his family through water is with them in a very personal way and wants to lead and guide if they will follow, maybe slows up a bit for the disciples who didn't catch on at first and shows his mercy and grace by saving them from a storm. When you and I are nearing the edge of our wits, 
when we feel actually tortured by the challenges that life is throwing to us, we remember this almighty Son of God who took on flesh so that he could be tortured in a way that God the Father who is Spirit and God the Holy Spirit could not be, so that Jesus could take the torture and the weight and the burden that our sins have earned for us and for all sinners for all time in his body on the cross so that he could be nailed not to a mast on a ship but to that horrible wooden cross where he would bear the weight and the burden and the torture that would reconcile fallen mankind to a just and righteous and holy God. Jesus cared enough about those disciples to seek them out as the Word of God who became flesh and dwelt among them and demonstrated God's love and God's kindness. And he even re-ran a bunch of miracles so that the disciples would have the opportunity to get the lesson again and again. He has done the feeding of the 5,000. Very shortly after they land, he's going to be doing the feeding of the 4,000. And he is going to be healing people from town to town and city to city, even those who just reach out and touch the tassel of his garment will be healed, showing that he is, yes, a prophet, but as the incarnate Son of God, much more than a prophet. And this Lord and Savior has promised to us as we get in the Gospel of John chapter 15 that he would send us the paraclete, the one who comes alongside us to help. And the Holy Spirit doesn't do this just through pollen or the wind or the breeze. He works specifically through word and sacraments. And we praise God that in the waters of baptism, God saved us. In a likeness that Peter, the only man that we know who walked on water successfully, and yes, sank into the water, and yes, was drawn up out of the water by Jesus, says that baptism now saves you just like God saved Noah and his family through water destroying the forces of evil that perhaps could have tempted and dragged them down and away from their real faith as well. God's Holy Spirit comes alongside us to help in the power of the gospel, reminding us that God has the power to save us. He has the inclination to save us as well. Jesus came to take on one of these bodies so that he could go to the cross, so that he could relieve all of the tortures and all of the tortured relationships that we have with family and extended family, among cities, among political groups, among nations. And that Jesus could not only come alongside us and offer help, but he could be the resurrection and the life. And all who believe in him will have their torturous rowing through the storm and the seas of life ended not just in horrible agony that we deserve because of our sinfulness, but with joy and peace and we get our eyes opened and we get to see the reconciled and perfectly cleansed and restored new earth and the joyful heavens that Christ will bring about on Judgment Day. As you are going through whatever struggles you may have, remember Jesus is not willing to just walk on by you. He is willing to come and literally get in the same boat as you so that you might be saved. Trust in him receive him as Lord, and your very eternal life and eternal destination and existence are safe in the nail-pierced hands of Jesus as he carries you safely home. In his name, amen. 
Now may the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we confess the faith that saves in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty Lord Jesus, when the storms of life seem too tortuous for us to bear, and our earthly supports are buckling, you remind us that you are the great I Am, with all authority in heaven and on earth, who comes alongside his disciples of every age to provide eternal life and unconquerable help. Although you are all powerful, you chose to be tortured so that we may live eternally. As your earliest disciples, we need to relearn this lesson and praise you for your love and patience, sending your spirit alongside us to help through word and sacrament. Many people, nations, families, and relationships have been stressed, even tortured through our pandemic times. Remind us of your love, mercy, and support, and help us point others to you. Provide relief from COVID-19 for our world, especially in India and Africa. Be with Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith and come alongside them through your Holy Spirit at work in word and sacraments. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song today is Behold Our God.
Yeah.